My guest this week on This Week in VC is Cody Sims. He's a VP running entertainment products at Yahoo. Tune in to learn what they're doing. There is no stopping an idea whose time has come. But the best entrepreneurs don't stand still with an idea. They get to the business of getting things done. So step forward with your idea. And when you're ready, sit down and tell me how you want to change the world. This Week in Venture Capital. Welcome to This Week in VC. It's great to be back. I've actually been traveling for a month and we banked a bunch of shows. This one's live. Cody, I'm glad to have you. Awesome. So happy to be here. Thanks, Mark. And um, it's great for me, too, because we've had, I don't know, we must have had 25 VCs on the show. We must have had... 15 or 20 entrepreneurs. This is the first time we've had someone who works at a big technology company. It's great to, great to have you. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. So you work at Yahoo. Yep. Uh, how long have you been there? Almost six years. Six years. Yeah. So you've been there through a few of those? A bunch of those. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of those. But it's been fun. It's been great. It's yeah. been a good ride. The interesting thing to me is despite the market machinations and what people say about Yahoo, and the ups and the downs and the drama and the Microsoft deal and the Carol Bartz and all that, your user numbers are pretty damn consistent. Yeah. Like you guys are still a big company. Like there's so many stories in the media about is AOL going to survive? You know, they were in the New Yorker. They were talking about how 80% of their revenue still comes from dial up. And, you know, I'm a big believer that AOL can, can survive this. A lot of discussion about MySpace. Is it a free fall? Give us a sense for how big Yahoo is. Yeah, it's 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 big. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think what Yahoo's done pretty well is figured out the mainstream internet user. Yeah. And uh, you know, some numbers that I think get overlooked sometimes. Um, globally, six hundred million uniques um, in the six hundred million uniques per, per month. month. Um, in the U.S., it's uh, one hundred eighty-seven million. Okay. Um, which you know actually makes it the most visited site on the internet, more than Google, more than Facebook in the okay. U.S. In terms of unique visitors? Unique visitors per month. Okay. Unique visitors, okay. yep. Um, it has... So, sorry, just to be sure I understand, you're saying more people every month go to Yahoo than Facebook in yep. the U.S.? Yep, yep. That's pretty astounding. It is. Do we need to hire a new CMO at Yahoo? To like make <laughs> sorry, I was just a total joke. All right. Um, no, but I mean, that's something I don't... Yeah. Think people talk about much. 12 products that are number one in Comscore. Um, you know, but then when you think about it, if you think about what you use on a daily basis, yeah. you maybe forget some of the things you use are Yahoo. If you are into stocks, you're going to Yahoo Finance. If you play fantasy sports, you're going to Yahoo Sports. Um, you know, if you are you know, just checking out what's going on in the celebrity news or whatever, you know, people are coming to the Yahoo homepage to see what's going on and they click into a slideshow on OMG, one of my products, and you know, go to town on it. So, right. And we get a lot of different behaviors coming to Yahoo for different things. Right. Um, I don't, I'm going to ask the studio. I don't know if you've got a TV uh, uh, PC hooked up, but if we do, I'd love to bring up the Yahoo homepage. If not, let's not worry about it. But yeah. what roughly is on the Yahoo homepage these days. So the, the big thing that, you know, that people come to is there's a big thing in the middle called the Today module. And do people, are people bookmarking the Yahoo homepage? Sure, yeah, it's, yeah. it's still you know, set as, as lots and lots of people's homepages. You know, if you, for example, if you have SBC Global um, as, as your provider, it comes default as your homepage, so a lot of users get it that way um, if you have SBC. But in general, it's, you know, it's the number one homepage in, in the US for people coming in to check out news and information. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, what we have right in the middle of the page is, is really like what's going on around the world. It's the Super Bowl of what's happening today on the Internet. Right. And, uh, you know, you check that out. You click down into whether it's sports, whether it's news, whether it's finance. Do you think a lot of, because Yahoo Mail is still big, right? Yeah. Like order of magnitude, do you have published numbers there or order of magnitude? I, off the top of my head, this may yeah. be inaccurate. Yeah. I think it's the number two mail service globally. Okay. Um, off in, top in of my head. Still in the hundreds of millions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hundreds of millions of users. Um, and those people, do they, by and large, go straight to Yahoo Mail page or are people still accessing it? Because I remember for a while there was an initiative to get yep. people to log on via the homepage. Yeah. So a lot of people do come to the Yahoo homepage to check their mail. And oh, there then, we go. Now we're on. Um, there you go. Is it 
showing. I, I don't know if people are seeing it or not. I think they're still potentially seeing me. Uh, if you can see it right now, I can see it anyway. Oprah no longer tops the most powerful list. So that's kind of in a lot of this stuff that seems to be showing up is celebrity. Yep. And is that stuff that's because you run inter entertainment products? Yeah. Is that stuff that you're responsible for? Yes. So the entertainment products will will point to my my uh, my portfolio. Um, what's interesting though is it depends on who was whose computer was running that homepage right there. Okay. Because the Yahoo homepage actually personalizes the content for you depending on what you have clicked on in the past. Okay. Um, so we actually have a lot of of, of <laughs> content technology underneath it that actually looks at. Um, you know, are you a user who heavily clicks on sports and uh, news content? Okay. Um, are you a user who heavily clicks on entertainment content, or do you often, you know, read personal finance information? And depending on that, the the module actually will serve different things to different people at different times. So if you just look up there, you can see we've got the screen up now, and yep. so so some of it's personalized to who I am. Yep. And then on the left hand side, I have almost like reminiscent of the Yahoo, the original Yahoo, yep. which is. Uh, a portal, a, a way to click in and get to the places I want to go. Navigate down to, yeah, those products. How often, so you run the entertainment products. Let's talk about what some of those are. Yeah. There's OMG. OMG, which is our celebrity site. So you can go and check out slideshows and, and you know, get get. Is that bigger than TMZ, yes, for example? Yes, it is. So OMG is num number one in its, in its category on me. Comscore. Wow. Yeah. And uh, uh, what? So you've got Yahoo Movies. Movies. Um, we battle back and forth with IMDb for number one in the category. It's okay. Flipped about every month for the last few months. And in Yahoo Movies, I get things. I presume like some industry news. Does it have an IMDb like database where I can find out what films an actor was in? Or? We do. Um, we're in the middle of refreshing all that because it's okay. a lot of that part of the site has has uh, needs an update. Okay. Um, but where Yahoo Movies, I think, has really made its, itself known is breaking trailers. So we okay. get a lot of exclusive trailers from the studios. Um, you know, if, if, if a movie's coming out, often the studio will exclusive, make it exclusive on Yahoo Movies for a few weeks. Okay. Uh, usually, it, Yahoo Movies and iTunes are kind of the two different places the studios will often place so that. So you've bet. got movies, you've got celebrity gossip, which is OMG. Yep. What else is in there? Uh, we have TV. Okay. Um, so TV anchors the number one most watched original video on the internet. Um, prime time in no time, which okay. recaps what was on TV last night. Okay. Um, we've got uh, Yahoo Music. How big is prime time? Prime time. Prime time in no time. In no time. How big um, is that? So, like I said, it's actually the number one most streamed original video on the internet. So um, if I'm, because I always think it's a YouTube video. Right. It's, it actually gets more than like the top YouTube video. Original video, right? Original so video. original video, yeah. And in fact, Yahoo has... So it might not rival Bed Intruder. So that's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, you know, but, but in terms of original content, like Yahoo is the place, if you're an original content producer, um, Yahoo is the place to come to get that broken and get audience. Um, again, another stat people probably don't know is Yahoo has nine out of the top 10 original videos on the internet. Um, okay. And uh, collectively, are more people watch Yahoo original videos than visit Hulu. Um, I mean, just wow. crazy stat. Like that's the thing I think that's gotten lost in all the news, in all the drama around the corporation, as you've mentioned over the last few years, is still just the size of audience that these content products generate. And you know, I guess one of the questions I see on here, so. The people that have default home pages set to Yahoo by plugins, ISPs, computers aren't smart enough to change it to Google. That's probably not fair, I guess. You know what I think? Uh, so this is just to give him credit for saying it, J.R. Geeman. <laughs> you know, I, I think we as an industry get lost in this idea that Chris Dixon called techies versus normals. Yeah. And we assume that everybody's using the same products that we are. So maybe at the cutting edge where people are using certain products, overwhelming majority of people feel comfort with Yahoo, yeah. AOL, and they've been there for years. And I think they still return because they feel a certain comfort with it. And it solves a really simple need. You know, I think, I mean, I personally am, you know, you know, we can talk about this later, like what are some of my favorite apps and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I use as, as many of the, of, of those services as you can name. But you know, if I look at my mom or I look at other people who are just logging onto the internet every day to get a sense of what's going on and what's big and what should I be talking about with my friends, um, you know, 
a, a, a simple, hey, here's what's happening in the news, here's what's really breaking across the internet, I think is uh, Yahoo's a, the place to go for that. Steve Jang is stopping by to give a shout out to you. Steve! He wants to know when you're going to go surfing together what's up, buddy? In, in L.A. Um, Have you checked out Steve's app, Sound Tracking? One of the coolest new music apps on, no, on the phone. No, what does it do? What is Sound Tracking? Sound do? Tracking um, lets you... Uh, hey, Steve, you owe me, buddy. Um, sound Tracking lets you uh, uh, actually check out uh, uh, place... It's, think of it as Instagram for music. Okay. So you can say, hey, here's a song I'm thinking of right now. Um, here's the mood it's putting me in, and you can share it out to Twitter or Facebook or wherever. Okay. Um, and basically create a soundtrack as you're walking around with a song that reminds you of a certain vibe that you're in. That may not be the right pitch, Steve, but that's what I, how I Close use the enough. app. Um, now, J.R. Jimin, the one who was asking about Yahoo before, is saying, well, Microsoft's still huge, Yahoo's still huge. The question is about Mo, yeah. momentum. Yeah. And you know, he's saying that Yahoo doesn't have momentum. But again, I have to say, and I'd like to maybe frame it. You yeah. can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, if you look at MySpace, and I'm not picking on MySpace because I'm not a MySpace hater, I think they still have a huge base of people who tune in, but the numbers are trending down on MySpace, yeah. and they've trended down steadily for the last 18 months. The numbers don't seem to be trending down on Yahoo. Right. I mean, am I wrong no. in saying that? Have they trended down? No, no, not in any substantial way. Um, I think, again, Yahoo, what we've figured out in the last, I want to say, nine to 12 months in terms of our company positioning, um, I think defines the company by, by the things we've actually been really successful in for years and years and years, which is we're now saying Yahoo is the premium um, digital media company. Okay. Right? And so what that means is think about the major competition in the internet space. Google, Facebook, Microsoft, AOL. We are the place where you can come get great content um, on a global scale with science and technology behind it. Right. So compare us, Google, Facebook, great science, great technology, not content sites, right? right? Um, CNN, New York Times, all Is these places. Is it fair to say that you guys are no longer trying to compete head on head with Google and Facebook? Other than a notional, you want user time, like share of mind. I or are you still, do you still see them as the main competition? Well, it depends. I think. We're, we're certainly competing for ad dollars, okay. right? Um, yeah. And you're certainly competing for overall reach on the internet. Okay. But I think the types of products we develop um, are not the same. We're right. not building the same product as Google. We're not building the so same product Steve as Facebook. Steve Halleck wants to know, is Yahoo concerned about not having tech techies or are you comfortable with the normals? Um, is it something like inside Yahoo when you're in private meetings with yeah. senior people? Because you guys must be techies, yeah. right? Um, I know you have been in product management for a long time. Yep. Do you guys sit around and say, oh, fuck, like, I want to get more of my friends using this? Or do you say, well, look, normals are the majority of the market. Let's just create stuff that normals want. You know, I think hitting a massive mainstream audience is great. Um, yep. I, think, uh, I think there are certain products that... Um, that uh, that resonate well with different audiences, and Yahoo hits hits a pretty damn big audience. Um, but I was gonna one thing I was gonna say, you know, if you look at the large internet companies out there, they are by and large technology companies that aren't content companies. Right. I think Yahoo is competing in the content world, but we also have a technology underpinning. Our our, for example, our, our entire content grid is running on Hadoop. We're the largest contributor to open source Hadoop on the internet, right? Wow. So we're, we're investing heavily in platforms and technologies and things like so that. So if you're a developer and you're technical and you want to really you know, either both do interesting work and bolster your resume, you can still do interesting technical stuff. At yeah. Home. And, and I think, in addition, when you look at who we compete with in a content publishing business world, in most cases, we're competing with local or regional media companies. Right. So we can bring to bear in markets around the world, whether it's Brazil, whether it's Taiwan, whether it's um, you know, my team. I'm, I have a six-week-old at home, so I didn't make the trip. Okay. But my team is in Dubai this week working on you know, meeting our Middle Eastern uh, business units and learning about the businesses there in, uh, in, in the Arabic world. So you know when you look at who we're competing with at scale in companies around the world or countries around the world, I think Yahoo can bring a technology um, to publishing that really, in most cases, the local media players we're competing against don't have. 
You know, I met today with Juan Pablo, who uh, is, was a former Yahoo employee, and he had worked, Juan Pablo Bedoya, I don't know okay. if you met him yet, hmm. and uh, he was a product manager on the Yahoo homepage, okay. uh, I think for th about three years. Okay. And what interests me about Juan Pablo, and I look at where his career's gone since then, he did a period at Fox and a period at City Search. Um, uh, what interests me about him is, He's worked at scale. Yep. And there's just not enough people who have worked at scale. Yep. And what's unique about Silicon Valley is the fact that there's a lot of people who have worked at scale. Yep. So if I'm a young developer and I'm thinking about my career, like there's a lot of places you can choose to work, but I wouldn't discount what you get somewhere at Yahoo, which is the ability to work at scale. If you have to, if you're a developer and you can say, yep, I took a, some API hacked it together and build it for a site that got, you know, 10,000 users a month. That says one thing. But if you say, I figured out how to take this data format and, yeah, I could have just quickly, you know, built it into a front-end module and threw it up on a page, but I figured out how to actually take the data, store it the right way, and then render it in the front-end in a way that could take on 30 million users a month, 100 million users a month, that says something about, you know, your ability to write code and, like, learn how to deal with massive scale web traffic. Right. Um, other things in your portfolio, uh, yeah. you have Shine. Shine, yeah. What is Shine? Shine's our women's lifestyle site. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's actually our fastest growing site in terms of users. What does it mean, women's lifestyle? So it uh, focuses on fashion, beauty, momness, okay. <laughs> parenting, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, okay. Yeah. And do you guys have e-commerce businesses as well? Yahoo, yeah, there's Yahoo Shopping, um, okay. but I think I think you know definitely there's elements of that with us, but you know definitely displays Yahoo's bread and butter. Okay, let's spend a bit of time talking about how people work with Yahoo because yeah. I think again, you know, a lot of startups watch this, and um, maybe maybe one way to intro this, we could talk about a, a company you recently bought into now. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, when they're thinking about who to do biz dev deals with, again, one of the things Yahoo brings is scale. Yep. It's something I think, like when I talk to my portfolio companies and we're lo looking at our biz dev list, you know, I'm thinking, well, what can we do with Yahoo because of the scale? Yep. Um, tell me about Into Now. What do they do? Why did you acquire them? Um, and then let's use that as a way to talk about how people work with Yahoo. Yep. So if people haven't used it, go to the App Store, download IntoNow, the app. It's, it's slick. Okay. So what IntoNow does is they have, for the last five years, been fingerprinting every single TV show that's aired in the United States. Okay. Um, so they have an audio library of all the shows in the US. Um, and they can think of it as Shazam for, uh, for, for TV content, okay. right? Um, except that it's also real time. So they okay. can, in four seconds of something airing, even if it's live TV, right. they can identify what show it was down to the episode level. Okay. Um, and then they can show you, if you've logged in with Facebook, um, if your friends are watching that show or if your friends have in the past watched that show. Right. And then they can recommend to you shows you should watch based on things your friends did watch as well. Okay. Um, it's, it's really slick. Um, and I think it, it's going to be part of redefining um, how... Watching TV, interacting with the internet, sharing that out, and interacting with advertising, you know, will change. Why did Yahoo buy into now? So, roughly 60% uh, of, the, of, of the time you're watching TV, you're in front of your laptop or some other device. So you're engaging with, internet time, uh, with the internet. Especially youth. Right. Yeah. Um, so, let me, you know, in terms of just pure engagement, the ability to have a product like this, be able to give you something to share and learn and, 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 um, uh, and to, um, you know, to play with as you're watching TV and share out to your friends what you're checking out is huge from an engagement perspective. Um, and then in terms of advertising, we're just, I mean, the Into Now guys are just starting to experiment with some cool interactive ad formats. Um, they ran a campaign with Pepsi, um, whereby as you um, are actually watching the show, if a Pepsi commercial comes on, it was for Pepsi Max. Right. If a Pepsi Max commercial comes on and you tag that, um, it actually gives you a physical coupon tied to your UDID. So it's okay. unique to your device that you can take into a score. Well, you store. say physical, but you mean virtual physical. Virtual physical. <laughs> a, a, on uh, your mobile device. On your mobile device. Yeah. Um, and uh, take it into your store, scan it, and actually get a free Pepsi Max. Um, so... 
some pretty cool stuff. And I think uh, really has the opportunity to, to kind of change how you get a, a re recommendation engine and build a taste graph around the entertainment content you watch. And entertainment content is so inherently social, right? By Jess is asking about the 60% quote that you gave 60% of time spent on another device. Um, I'm guessing, I don't want to overly pick on the data, but I'm guessing you mean within a certain demo, right? Uh, I actually don't know okay. the demo breakdown. Sorry, by Jess. Um, but, but the 60% is, is a number that you guys quote internally or an into now yeah. number or whatever? Yeah, it's an into now number. It's a number I know they've been sharing. I mean, I certainly believe that in the youth categories. Yeah. I would be deeply suspect of it in, um, in the you know, higher age demos. Yeah, okay. Uh, but not that it matters. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, we know it's a trend. We know it's not disappearing. Second screen TV is going to transform the way that we watch and consume yep. TV, I think. Yep. So making it more interactive. I mean, I know personally I'm sitting there either either on my iPhone or my iPad or my laptop. Now, am I the typical demo? No, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but you know, it's, it's multi... You're not necessarily engaging around the show you're watching, but you're at least multitasking doing something as you're on the computer. Did Into Now have a biz dev partnership with Yahoo first? No. Or? Okay. No. So... Um, they uh, approached us through our, our corporate dev channels, yeah. um, corporate development, and uh, we already had an, an idea strategically of where we wanted to go, both with the connected TV world, right. with, the, um, with, with the video world, and with entertainment world in general, and uh, it fit the vision of where we were heading. What's the genesis of most acquisitions? Is it a product guy like you that has a domain area that says, I've got a team of developers building stuff, but I need to plug holes. Is it corp dev saying um, what out there is interesting? Is it uh, a guy like Ross Levinson who runs the U.S. saying I got to hit my revenue targets? Let's go buy something that's going to bump revenue. What? All of the above, actually, um, which is a lame answer, but is okay. is actually true. So I, you know, a couple examples. I think um, for sure. Someone like me who's saying, hey, here's the product strategy I'm building toward. Here's what we want to do in the entertainment area in general. Um, here's where we want to be in three years, and here's gaps we have in trying to get there. If we were going to build it internally, um, we identify things we want. That's one. The other is um, if we have partnerships that we're realizing that more and more are becoming core to either our business or our product um, that we've integrated with, yeah. um, you know, we'll go out and acquire them. A great example of that was Right Media. Okay. So Right Media, we realized a few years ago, we were running the, the bulk of our class two inventory through. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden we realized that's something we should really look at. And just for viewers to find class one, class two? Oh, uh, sorry. Class one is uh, guaranteed display advertising. Class mm -hmm. two is, um, is it remnant, remnant yeah. performance yeah. Uh, display. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Right Media, we realized it was becoming core to our business. Um, Definitely, we get approached by banks who are looking to, hey, we got a fire sale. We need, you know, is this something Yahoo's interested in? Yeah. That, that is a reactive M&A, but that happens as well. Okay. And often that will come to us from Corp Dev. Okay. So in, in the first two cases, it would be the product team or the editorial team saying, you know, either, either this aligns with the strategy of where we're going, let's go out and be proactive, and or we've already partnered with these guys, we're deeply integrated with them, it's becoming core to our business. We need to bring them into the fold. Um, so Into Now was the first, right? right? Um, something like Right Media was what the is, second. What does Into Now mean to you? Because Into Now, obviously, there's your connected TV initiative. You've long been like with Confabulator, producing, wanting to produce widgets for TV sets and all that. Um, but that that's not part of your purview, right? Your there's connected TV group right. and then there's the entertainment yeah. products. Does, does Into Now work at all with the entertainment products? Or? Um, well, we're working on our integration plans. Okay. There was obviously strategic rationale for why we acquired them, but you know, inherently it's all about what shows are you watching, whether it's a TV show or whether it's a movie um, or whether it's a music video. Right. It's what are you watching when you're at home? Or even if that thing is fingerprinted on the web. So if right. it's a Hulu video or a YouTube video, you know, they, if, if they can hear it, they can tell you what it was. They right. can tell you when it was on TV. So um, you might be able to integrate that into your properties and, yeah. and find ways to then make that a more engaged experience yeah. for the user. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's that's a big goal. Um, and you guys are growing. I know you guys are looking to hire people. I should give you a minute to plug that. 
Yes, we are growing. I've got three open product management roles on my team. So if anybody's interested, uh, probably the easiest way to hit me up is on Twitter, just at Cody. Um, just shoot me a note, um, C-O-D-Y. Um, we, uh, I've got a, an open product Not role. anyone can do that because for someone to hit you up implies that they're putting it in the public. In front of everybody? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. So maybe on LinkedIn <laughs> or something? Sure, hit me on LinkedIn. <laughs> Good yeah, point. Yeah. Um, those of you who are openly looking for jobs, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> um, you would think with a handle like at Cody, I would get how Twitter works at this yeah. point, right? Jeez. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm hiring for a, uh, a, a lead product role for Yahoo Movies, okay. um, a, lead, uh, a product role on our Lifestyles team for, okay. uh, for Yahoo Shine, and then also um, a director of product role across uh, movies, TV, and OMG. So some pretty, pretty powerful you know, multi-million, multi-tens of million dollar Based in portfolios. Los Angeles? Or does All it based in Santa where Monica. They're, where they're based? Santa Monica, okay. ideally. Um, now, if someone wants to get acquired and it's in an area in entertainment, uh, you know, I guess having a biz dev partnership first would at least help, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And to, to do biz dev, does Yahoo have like a centralized biz dev group they should talk to? Or should they reach out to people who run news, sports, finance, entertainment? Those are your four big yep. verticals. Yeah, those are our four big anchors. We do. We have a, in, in the U.S. region, which is what I guess many people here would be interested in hitting, we have central U.S. region biz dev team. I'm happy to make intros there if people want to chat there, um, definitely. Um, let's talk a little bit about your past. Yeah. Before you uh, became VP in the entertainment area, if I'm not mistaken, you were running the product side for Yahoo Open Social. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what that initiative was, and we'll use that as a way to then kind of talk about where you see social going, because you were at the emergence of Facebook becoming this behemoth, but you were involved before they became as powerful as they were in trying to figure out what some of the open standards might be. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I, uh, I did product management for what we called the Yahoo Open Strategy. And it was basically Yahoo's identity layer um, across Yahoo, um, as well as all of our open developer platforms. So part of that is Yahoo Developer Network. So if you're a developer who uses things like YQL, um, those, are, those are platforms that came out of our, uh, our initiative to open up Yahoo's data. Um, YQL is probably the, the, the biggest legacy of that whole initiative in terms of a product that, that, that developers um, really love. Um, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with YQL, but um, think of it as, um, as a, essentially a, a web service layer on top of MySQL. So okay. you can basically proxy any web API or any SQL table through YQL and actually access it as a web service. Okay. Um, so it uh, um, makes it really powerful to do like joins and calls across multiple structured data sources. Okay. Um, pretty cool. Um, so, but in general, you know, I, we ran the identity layer. So Yahoo OpenID all, built all of our OAuth infrastructure at Yahoo, um, which we didn't, OAuth didn't even exist when we started this initiative. Right. Um, uh, I was shortly on the board of Open Social myself, though I moved to this new entertainment role kind of after that started and, and uh, I've sent someone else at Yahoo does that now. Um, okay. But um, tried to tried to turn Yahoo into an open, scalable platform for developers um, to integrate with our identity to to build applications across Yahoo. And I Yahoo per se doesn't have its own it doesn't have its own social network, right? Um, not in a big single centralized way, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's little there's pockets of communities at Yahoo. Um, some of them have been around forever, like Yahoo Groups. You know? Okay. So you've got. You know, groups and you know things like FreeCycle, which is one of the largest groups on the is internet. Is FreeCycle zoned by Yahoo? No, it's just an open Yahoo group that's been built on Yahoo Groups okay. infrastructure for years. Oh, my and years. wife uses it all the right. time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there are areas where it would be nice to see Yahoo innovate more. Like Yahoo Groups yeah. has so many people using it. It's such a crap product <laughs> relative to what it could yeah. be. Yeah. And Yahoo Answers. Mm -hmm. I mean, so used relative to how bad the product is. Yeah. And you see so much innovation happening, you know, whether it's Stack Exchange, whether it's, um, um, why am I forgetting the name of the big one that, anyway. The you know, I, I agree with that, but I'm also going to challenge that. Okay. Because part of the, so I agree. We shouldn't have products that are out okay. there that, that. Quora. I wanted to say Zora, Quora. Right. We shouldn't have products out there that people aren't proud of, right? Yeah. We shouldn't. Um, but at the same time,
people people uh, critique Yahoo for being not focused. Yeah. And for not having a brand identity. Yeah. And at the same time, they want every product we build to, or that we launched within the last 15 years, to continue to be leading the industry. Right. And that's just not, I mean, it's not practical now. So is it fair to say then, if I take it, let's take answers or let's take groups. Yep. Let's take groups. Is it fair to say that if it's not getting innovation, someone at Yahoo has determined it's not likely to be a large revenue engine and therefore it shouldn't get scarce resources? I don't want to speculate on that, um, honestly. But okay. I think you know. I think what we are trying to do is invest in products that we know are core to where we want to go. Um, okay. And there are products that we have that that aren't great, but they do they do well right. doing what they do. Right. Right. But then you leave yourself subjected to the potential of someone coming in and do ma mass innovation. I yeah. mean, I think like Evite, yeah. right? Yeah. Like IAC owns Evite, and Evite had such a large market share and for so many years never invested and it was such a shitty product. <coughs> anyway, that's why I guess I wonder why yeah. some of the bigger properties on Yahoo. It's it's a matter of focus, right? Like we've got to choose what we're investing Yahoo in. Because Yahoo Mail got significantly better over the last several years right. and a lot of energy must have gone into a that. A lot of energy went into that. On the media side, on my products, um, the big thing we're working on this year is actually building out a central content platform across media. So okay. today, you know, I run what is it, six or seven verticals globally. Um, each one of those is often built on its own code base in every country we operate in. So for me to innovate at scale is impossible today. Right. right? Impossible. Um, and you see that in our product yeah. in many cases. Um, we're moving everything to a central content platform that allows us to now um, essentially innovate in a single place and run a configuration out across the world. Um, <coughs> that's a big deal, and it's going to have implications, I think, on content globally once we can do that at scale. Um, but we have to place our bets. You can't do that in every product we operate in in every country all around the world. So Yahoo makes uh, an overwhelming majority of its um, revenue as a media company from advertising, and so do we. Yeah. So I have to take a quick break sure. where we can talk about uh, our sponsor of the show. Our sponsor is called Fenwick & West. Fenwick & West is a law firm. They work um, with some of the biggest companies in Silicon Valley, but they also have a startup practice. Their startup practice focuses very specifically on how to work with young entrepreneurs, and that team is dedicated to working with entrepreneurs. And I like to say on the show that the reason I know that is they were my law firm when I was an entrepreneur. So I worked with Fenwick and West. They helped me uh, navigate some tricky waters. In fact, when my company got acquired by Salesforce.com, and I worked with a, a gentleman over there named Sam Angus. And um, you know, in appreciation or support of the entrepreneurial community they've chosen to sponsor this show, which is awesome. great. So thank you to Fenwick and West. Um, social, you have frenemies because you already talked about how you do some authentication with Facebook. Yep. Um, I know you work a little bit with Twitter. Talk about how Yahoo works with Twitter and Facebook and how you see that frenemy relationship working. Sure. So you can fully authenticate the Yahoo network now with Facebook. You can log into your Yahoo Mail account by clicking log in with Facebook. You're kidding me. No. Wow. So it's, uh, we are fully, totally committed to allowing people to access our content and personalize it as quickly and however they want. Okay. Um, and I think it took us a while to come around to that, of course, you know, as being a large scale identity provider ourselves on the internet. Um, but ultimately, um, again, this goes back to Yahoo realizing with clarity we want to be the world's largest premium digital media company. Yeah. And to do that, we need to allow you to personalize your experience fast and efficiently. And bringing your Facebook friends or your Twitter friends or sharing our content out to those networks is a pretty fast darn way to do that. Right. Um, so it, you know, it, it became... So one way that you work with Facebook is authentication, meaning someone who wants to log in to a Yahoo product can log in yep. with that credential. Number two, I get my social graph. Yep. So I can do things on Yahoo where suddenly I have the experience of the other people that I'm connected to on Facebook. Do you do other things with Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, so back to the notion of editorial publishing. Um, we publish aggressively, of course, our content into the Facebook stream and into the Twitter stream. And are so, they a big referrer for you? Yeah, now? they're they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, when you're competing again with a Yahoo homepage that's you know this massive fire hose on the internet, it's it's still harder to compete. But they are becoming a larger referral source. Um, 
we are, um, I think I saw the stat, I think this was a comm score number, so I, I might be wrong, um, but it was the number two most liked network on the internet behind YouTube was, was Yahoo. Okay. Um, by a pretty big order of magnitude. So YouTube was way big. When you say most liked network, what does that mean? Like people who have liked uh, a oh, certain oh, domain. Oh, yeah, okay. So gotcha. YouTube was the top. I think this was a Comscore report that I saw. Okay. Um, YouTube was the top. Yahoo was number two. And I think we were about two or three times larger than whoever was number three okay. in terms of people just liking. And then that gives us, obviously, the opportunity to publish our content into, into the Facebook stream, okay. which drives referral traffic back. Right. So you publish in Facebook. You publish from Yahoo's fan page, is it? Yeah. Um, do each of your properties have their own yeah. fan pages? So you've got an OMG page and you've got whatever. Yeah. Um, and then on Twitter, do you also have Twitter handles for all these yeah. categories? Yeah, each of our products have Twitter handles we publish into. So it's a very deep uh, interrelated web now between the big properties, Twitter, Facebook, Yahoo, sending traffic there, getting traffic back. Yep, for sure. It always, I mean, it always has been, right? You right. Know, Google with search is a big traffic referral and, and whatnot as well. Google has, over the years, there's been discussions about trying to leverage Gmail into a social network. They did Google Buzz. There's rumors that they're launching their next product. Um, at one point, wasn't Yahoo trying to do that as well, like try to make mail a little bit more social? Or Yeah, that's part of what I worked on, was helping to you to bring um, updates from people you know, your connections and whatnot, into mail. Um, if you search my name on TechCrunch or on, you know, on, on Google or on Yahoo, um, I'm sure there'll be articles come up where I you know, talk a lot about that kind of stuff. Um, I talked with Arrington about it last year. So um, we, we have been investing in that. Um, I still think it's interesting to see the stuff, if your contacts have done stuff publicly. Right. So if your contacts have, are publicly tweeting or have publicly posted photos to Flickr or are doing other public stuff, showing you what they're doing is open season. It's free right. game. Public is public. And we've right. taken that perspective as a company, and we've built those products into our services like Yahoo Mail. Um, it helps you engage. It's, it's, to me, it's interesting. If I'm emailing you, and yep. I'm using Yahoo Mail to email you, yep. and we automatically associate with your email account, because you've got it publicly associ associated somewhere, um, your recent tweets or your recent public face, uh, Flickr photos, that's, that's interesting. It adds right. to my experience. Right. But, um, but I, I think... Uh, and in a way, I guess that's what people like Reportive have done a pretty good job with. Yeah. I don't know if you played with Reportive. I haven't, no. it's, it's pretty cool. It's, um, you know, it's a plug-in for Gmail. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're plugging in other places. But So it's good that you haven't used it, right? Because right. <laughs> then I would be shaming you here. <laughs> um, uh, but basically, when people send me emails and I don't know who they are, it automatically brings up like a link to their LinkedIn and to some recent tweets that they've done. It just helps me figure out who they are, they are. before, yeah, you know, and that's... We were talking about it earlier. It's yeah. like, you know, half the time you don't know who this person was that emailed Ex you. So exactly. if we can add a little context to that experience other than just the vanilla email, yeah. you know, it's helpful. Yeah, one small tip for people emailing this. Cody and I were talking about this before the show is people email me and they say, I'd like to intro you to so-and-so. And then I'm scratching my head and saying, yeah, but who are you? <laughs> like... Because they met you for five minutes at a conference. And by the way, if they said, I met you at South by Southwest and we were doing A, B, and C, then I'd say, boom, oh, I remember. Yeah. But like it just blindly, I don't, I, I don't have the association with the right. name. Right. Um, so where do you see social networking heading? You worked in it for years. Yeah. Um, What's next? Well, I think in a, from a pure place social networking standpoint, I think what's still missing is the ability to construct smaller, more personal experiences. So the ability to, to create smaller circles of people that you care about. Like, you know, so I, for example, um, I just had a son. He's six yep. weeks old. Okay. I don't post his photos on Facebook because right. I have not taken the time to curate my network there. Right. I think that's missing. That's a use case that's, uh, that's an opportunity. Um, like path? Right. Yeah, maybe. Right? How do I, I Path is, is very cool. Um, I'm more of an Instagram guy. There are different use cases, but you can only have so many photo apps you use but at once. But Instagram's still public, right? It is. Instagram's yeah. totally, so I've taken the approach that most things I post are totally public. No, but with your child, right? right. Like, this is a conversation I have a lot with yeah. people, Cody, because, you know, being in the tech industry, most of the people I interact with, they're young. Yeah. And they have the belief system that everything's open. Yeah. 
And when I say no, actually not everything's open. Like, I don't want you to know where I'm purchasing yep. things. I don't believe that Blippi or open uh, publishing of my data is where things are going long term. And they would say, oh, but that's because you're 43 or whatever. Right. And my response is, no, I'm just at a different life stage. Um, because I'm very open. People know that with almost everything, but not pictures of my kids. Right. right. And so for me, when your life circumstances change and you hit different life events, you have different needs. Yeah. Uh, so I agree, and that's again where I think there's an unsolved need in social networking. I want to create, um, I want to create, but I don't want to take the time to create yeah. uh, a group that I can share stuff just to my college friends that I still keep in touch with, a group exactly. of the people I hang out with here in LA, a group of people I hang out with here in LA who are internet people but aren't my friends. Right. right? There's right. like these nuances. That's hard, and that's an open so, opportunity. There is somebody working on that opportunity. I'm sure there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I know the person. <laughs> I, just, I don't know how public he is yet with it, but he's working on it, and I'm trying to be helpful. So I think that's one thing. Yeah. And I think the other thing that still isn't solved, and that I think someone like Yahoo, we can solve, and I, am, I hope there are other people trying to solve this too, is bringing context to social. So I show up at Twitter or Facebook, and I, I mean, I love it. I'm on Twitter all day. Um, but it's a zeitgeist for me, right? It's a random stream of stuff. Yeah. Um, what's missing is the ability to see that stuff aggregated by the topic that I care about. So okay. to start with the context and then bring social to it, whether it's the free-form conversation that's happening about that topic overall, mm -hmm. whether it's the authenticated conversation that's happening about my topic just from my friends. Yeah. I loved the company um, Googlebot a, a couple months ago, Fflick. Okay. You know, a little, little startup that was aggregating tweets around movies. So okay. I could go to a movie and I could see if my friends had tweeted about it sometime in the last six months. Right. Cool use case. Right, right. right? Yeah. Neat. Um, or if it's, if our authoritative people topic, talking about this topic. So yeah. our, if it's a movie, are the top five movie we, review sites talking about it? I spent it? a lot of time looking at the category. Um, LA-based company called Collecta that's mm. been working a lot in that category, uh, which is taking tweets and then t taking a stream, which is not just tweets, but other sure. real-time data, and trying to help you curate them so that you could maybe put them on a website that might be who has the most authority on this topic, yep. or let, let me just see my friends on the topic, or let me see people local on the topic, yes. and try to find ways to take this great big fire hose and slice it up into more meaningful streams. And GRP, the fund that I'm a partner in, is about to announce an investment in this oh. space. So in the next three or four weeks, I hope. That's great. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's... I've been looking at it for 18 months, the space, and I finally found the one I fell in love with. That's great. I'll have to yeah. check them out. Yeah. Um, but that's a, uh, I mean, to me, is an opportunity. But you have to, to have an experience like that, you need to put it on a place that has scale, right? You need to put it on a place where people are going to find it. Otherwise, it gets lost. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about tablets. Yes. Uh, today, that basically means iPads. Right. Where do you see that industry going? Do you see it changing the way content is delivered or consumed? Is Yahoo even thinking about it? Do other tablets matter? What, you know, tell me a bit about that category. Um, I think tablets are going to absolutely transform how people consume um, content for sure but it, it, it is starting to for me and I think for me personally I think that trend will only accelerate as more and more content sources find their voice on a tablet and I think that's what's interesting yeah. is you just like when content first came online I think the tablet actually requires you to think about how you publish differently right. differently than how you publish it on the internet um, and it's totally different than your phone Right, so your phone, I don't want to read articles on my phone isn't, necessarily. Isn't it, Cody, slightly broader than that in the sense that we're entering a world in which screen size matters. And so you've got cons content creation on one side and then we have distribution in the middle and then we have consumption on the other side. And the old model of development, even back when I was a developer, yeah. you know, was all about separating presentation layer. Yeah. And even XML, a lot of it was about how do you create data that separates it from the presentation layer? Because the future, I know we're at this precipice of more is gonna be consumed on an iPad, which is bigger than a mobile phone, but we're gonna have, we already have mobile phones where we're consuming the web, tablets where we're consuming the web, 
now TVs where we're yeah. consuming the web, computers where we're consuming the web, and developers are going to have to make sense of all that, and they can't build different things for everywhere, right? Right. You, 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 it de you have to place your bets, I think, depending on the type of consumption experience you're looking for, right? So um, how we get to a totally multimodal world where you, you, you invest once and it is magically rendered everywhere, I think is tough, Yeah. Um, right? Like, I, I don't know that that meets the use case. Like, the phone is a location use case. The phone, the best apps on the phone have to do with where am I right now. Almost, almost exclusively. You say that, and the truth though is that I think, um, I think that's what we read about. I think that's really? what we hear about. Mm. Well, look, Cody, I don't know for sure, okay? Because I'm not an analyst, so I don't get to spend my day yeah. pouring over data. But I get to spend my day talking to companies, and I always ask them, "So, what's going on with mobile? What, what right. are you seeing?" I look at e-commerce companies that I'm talking to. Uh, a very large one, which I can't name, was showing me their data. And since they optimized their websites for mobile, 14% of all purchases are happening on mobile now. And yes. what they were saying was that um, they're actually converting higher on mobile than on the web in terms of conversion rates because they were able to optimize the funnel. Yeah, I buy that for mobile web. I was talking more apps. I was, so separating the difference there, right? Okay. So, the mobile web, I, I think that's probably more true, where it's just the ability to have a website that is the same use case as you would have at your desktop, except you're sitting at a well, cafe. What, what, I, what I would agree to, Cody, is I think the most interesting new element to come from mobile is location. Yeah. And it's changing the computing model, which is so much now of what I do can become more interesting because of location. That's right. That I totally agree with, and I think it's the most transformative thing about mobile. But the apps I use personally most frequently on my phone almost all have a location element. Yelp, yeah. Google Maps, Zagat, yeah. Flickster. Right. They're all about like where am I, what's nearby, right? right. Like almost exclusively. Um, even Instagram, tag, take the photo, tag it with where I am. Yeah. Now, again, I'm a, an edge use case. Yeah. I'm not the typical mobile user. And the truth is, the majority of what people are using on mobile devices are games. Right, that's true. Which is not location. Location at all. Um, the most transformative part, I will go again and say, you hit the nail on the head, like Yelp. People just don't talk about it enough, but it's just phenomenal yeah. now where I go somewhere where I don't know and I'm looking for a coffee shop or a restaurant or whatever. And to be able to filter and say, okay, it's 11 in the morning, I'm in Pasadena, but I want breakfast. Right. So I want to filter on what's near me uh, that's open right now, yep. that serves breakfast, that gets enough user ratings. Yeah. And it just immediately said, well, here's the six Power prices. structured data, man. It's, it's awesome. It's unreal. Yeah. I think the power, like, I don't understand why more people aren't trying to compete with Yelp on stuff yeah. like that. It's yeah. powerful. Um, but back to tablets. So I think, as I was saying, on, mo on, on mobile, I think that location is the is the killer function that makes the apps on mobile that much more interesting? I do agree with you that just you know optimizing your website for mobile presentation surely is increasing e-commerce sales at places like Amazon. Of course it is because you're yeah. bored, you want to shop, easy. Yeah. But the transformative nature of mobile is, I think, the location. Tablet, I think, it's different. Tablet, I think, it's the lean back experience. It's the ability to sit on your couch and instead of picking up your copy of uh, you know the Economist, right. the ability to sit and actually flip through it in presentation. Um, in, a, in a nice presentation, watch a related video about the story you're reading, um, and really have an immersive, interactive experience about a story or about content instead of just you know scrolling and reading. So it changes. It, it really does bring multimedia finally into our hands, yeah. right? Because that's what you're saying. It's multimedia. Right. It's I mean, think of you know. So when the when the Kindle uh, recently came you know came out on on the iPhone when the app launched. One of the coolest use cases I thought, and this is black and white text, was reading a passage where all of a sudden there was an underline on the passage on, on the book I was reading on Kindle. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait what is this underline? And you, know, you hover over it, and the, it tells you 15 other people have highlighted this line. And you read it again, and you're like, that's a beautiful line. Like, it was really well written, um, which you can't do in a book. There's no interactivity. And that's like 
interactivity 0 0.1 version, yeah, yeah. right? So the ability to instead, if you're reading a, a magazine or a, a rich piece of editorial content, instead of just having it highlighted, but having a related video to the passage you're reading or a photo slideshow to flip through in addition to the passage you're reading, some way to distract you is great. And as I was starting to say to you um, on our way here, I think what the tablet is going to do is create a new economy around content in terms of investments, people doing innovative things around content right. that hasn't happened since the late 90s in terms of new models, investment, things that people can do that are actually disrupting um, content consumption. Give me an example. Um, sure. I mean, obviously, the, the most cited example, of course, is Flipboard, right? Yeah. Just, I mean, it's kind of a lame example for me, but it's, it's so obvious. But I think even looking at things like Wired, like the way, um, the way that, that Condé Nast is starting to publish content out onto the tablet, um, focusing on, you know, instead of a magazine cover, they actually have a video as their very first screen for you to check out. Um, stuff like that is, is really interesting. So here's a hypothesis I have, I'd be interested, and you can say it shit, I don't mind if you disagree. Sure. The world, the web and iPad is moving much more to a video medium. Yeah. And all the websites I know, all of the places where people consume text-based content are struggling economically to make that model work, mm -hmm. which is editorial is expensive, uh, ads have been falling, ads, ECPMs have been falling, competition is increasing, people's attention is fragmenting and they're spending more time at other places. And so people have started to integrate new models like Huffington Post did of saying maybe there's a cheaper way to aggregate content. I mean, even in our industry, I see it with Business Insider running other people's content, yeah. tech crunching. Two paragraphs and a link out. Yeah. 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 Um, and as I think about that and I think about um, what Tim Armstrong said about AOL, which is 4% of their content is video today. He didn't publicly say it, but it was released. Uh, so I hope that it's accurate that he aspires within a set period of time to make 70% of their content video. But in a world in which people are struggling to find great content producers of text, I just don't know how websites are going to create great video content. The skills aren't there. Right. And so I made another investment, which we haven't talked about publicly, and I hope to be able to talk about soon, um, in video production. So you go back to your saying, which is, in an iPad era, maybe people are going to reinvest in new ways of content. I would say even more broadly speaking, I think new types of content have to emerge. That's what people want to do. They want to be entertained. And someone's going to have to produce all that. Yeah. And I think um, from an advertising perspective as well, what the tablet lets you do is have so much control over the presentation as the, as the publisher that you automatically create rich experiences that advertisers want to be associated with. They're beautiful, they're lean back, they're interactive. And, but those are high touch type of creative things. That's what magazines yeah. are good at. Right. They're good at you know glossy, big, beautiful photos. Um, and I think that will actually translate into the iPad in the way it never translated into a you know, an LREC banner ad yeah. um, in the middle of a web page. LREC being? Uh, square. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can't use these terms Sorry. on this show. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Browse Mob says the amount of time it takes to produce good content is way too slow for the speed of the net. Yeah. I would turn that on its head, Browse Mob. I would say the net is the net. Consumption of media is changing. That's what I think studio execs don't get. The idea that we're only going to consume 22-minute video or 44-minute video, or that all video has to have a single narrative stream that might not branch out and go in other directions, or that people aren't going to want to participate as they're consuming video, um, I think is false. I think the way that we're consuming in the future is different based on how the net is and based on the fact that people have shorter attention spans or want to do two things at once. Yeah. And so I think someone needs to figure out how to produce new types of content for new types of consumption patterns. I think the other thing that matters about content, and this is back to Yahoo hitting the mainstream audience well, um, I think we get stuck in a world where it's all about 
um, the power of the user to share and be the programmer, be the producer themselves. Yeah. You know, again, I've got Twitter open on my desktop all day. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm following the zeitgeist. Um, but people also still want um, Super Bowl experiences. Yeah. They also still want to have those one or two or three like huge events to rally around and talk about. And I think, um, I think there is a place in the world for um, content to be both personalized as well as to, to showcase things that are hits. Like you still have to have a hits industry because yeah. people want to rally around something. That's why people watch American Idol, right? Yeah. Or but here's the thing about hits, okay? American Idol produces a hit because of a, an oligopoly. Yeah. They produce a hit because they have a time slot and a budget that they can control and get a large audience there and sell advertisers yeah. against that. They still know bugger all about the end people watching that show. At the company I invested in, we produce content. We already know who the users are because mm -hmm. they subscribe to our channels. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we can get direct and immediate feedback from them about what they want to see. We can actually get them engaged in helping to spread the word. Yep. And you know, we know how to make vi uh, videos go viral. And so it, I think it challenges the notion of what is popular and how popular gets created. And it doesn't require us to have a time slot and a huge budget. And again, I think that's very similar to the Yahoo model, which is we have this homepage that hundreds of millions of user, users are coming to, that we have a handful of articles that we know are big that day, but we'll program it according to your tastes. So you know, you're going to have a you're going to have a slightly different tray of content than I will, yeah. right? Um, but it's only a, a certain amount to where we're still we still have that Super Bowl sort of mentality around the first thing we engage you with. But then you click down, and from there we can start to recirculate you into other things that are very personalized to your interest. Do we do that really well today? No. But as we more deeply integrate with Facebook or Twitter or other places where we so can show you personalized content, I my, think we can. My great challenge for Yahoo, I'd like to give you a challenge. Please. Oh, today. awesome. <laughs> I got my pen out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, listen. Yahoo still seems to be the master at, I have a large audience. Yep. And I know how to curate for the audience. I'm a modern day digital media company. And so I might produce video. Uh, I might license or um, pay people to go produce video. Now I know what users want because I, that's what I do. I'm a digital media company. So you said earlier nine out of 10 or nine of the top 10 original videos on the web every week yeah, month, I believe. Every yeah. month mm. are on Yahoo, yeah. right? A lot of that comes because you know content, you know how to produce, you know how to curate, and you have distribution. There's a funnel. Yeah, have a fire hose. But yeah. I think the future and where you need to be to be successful has got to be creating a platform that content producers can plug into yeah. and other people can consume and creating a viral effect also yeah. uh, of video. And, and, and just my, my statement would be, uh, YouTube is the most transformative thing of the future of video that, that people don't talk enough about. And I see no reason that Yahoo, I mean, Yahoo may not choose to have a, 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 a YouTube competitor where I can upload for free videos of my kids and share with my parents, yep. but a semi-professional video place, because you have the distribution to enable uh, semi-professional video content producers to get all these eyeballs and so you have the, a way to drag them in to spend more time and the more you did that the more you could get people on the other side producing stuff for free yeah so we've done that for text-based content yeah not video yet okay. uh, last year we acquired associated content um, and associated yes. content huge crowdsource network of content where we actually get semi-pro yeah paid contributors to come out and actually write articles on spec from our editors yeah. for, for pay, right? right? So we can say we need, let's take an example of um, uh, the royal wedding last weekend. We yeah. need five articles about you know, your thoughts and reactions around how the ceremony happened. And right. we can literally go get that from anyone on the web who wants to sign so up. It's a way for you to create lower cost content. Yeah and on spec on demand from our editorial staff right. um, as we go. As well as, the cool thing about associated content is in addition, the, the contributors can also propose what, content. What I like about YouTube, um, 
which I haven't yet seen from demand media um, or associated content, but maybe I'm just not familiar enough with it, is my view is demand media has a place in this world. And I always argue with people who say it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Michael Arrington famously called it the McDonald's of content. And the truth is I read The Economist, mm -hmm. right? So, well, you know, I, you know, all this crap content, right? But the truth is I don't eat at McDonald's every day but a lot of the country does right. and you know i never read tv guide you know but a lot of the country did or reader's digest rather reader's digest i mean like um the masses of people are wanting to consume content like that so i don't have any problem with it mm -hmm. but the idea that says i want a video a low-cost video of someone to cover the royal wedding right and i'm gonna have these teams of people who might produce something that's going to be mcdonald's like for me, that's one market segment. Mm -hmm. But instead, if I said, here's a platform, mm -hmm. anyone create anything you want that's pro or semi-pro or whatever, mm. you might produce amazing things sure. like we see on YouTube from time to time. There's beautiful stuff. Like, that my, you don't even pay for to be created. My little brother's the product manager at blip.tv, okay. which is a great innovative startup. People should check it out. Um, they provide great uh, publishing, video publishing tools um, for video bloggers. Yeah. They just launched their consumer destination right. yesterday. Okay. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. You can go there now, blip.tv, and actually you know, check, out, uh, check out online uh, high-end high but crowdsourced, not crowdsourced, high-end, you know, uh, original video content for the web. Okay. Well, listen, we could go on and on. Um, I want to try to bring it to wrap. So I want to say, first of all, big thank you to Fenwick and West for sponsoring the show. I'm grateful both of your commitment to entrepreneurs and your commitment to our show. Uh, Yahoo is a great American media company, digital media company, and I think people just haven't fully appreciated because we tech people like the latest gadgets, just how strong Yahoo is in terms of continued uh, user engagement, really. Uh, so thank you for coming here today to talk a little bit about what you're doing. Great, Mark, thanks it. so much. Been great. Good, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, there is no stopping an idea whose time has come. But the best entrepreneurs don't stand still with an idea. They get to the business of getting things done. So step forward with your idea. And when you're ready, sit down and tell me how you want to change the world. This week, Venture Capital.